far as the babes in Planet Terror go, we just ended up with really fantastic actresses. I think that's what lends itself to, to giving us that poster art and the trailers where you just see, God, this movie has everything. Rose McGowan, no one else could play Cherry. She has to be able to do the action, she has to be sexy and romantic, and I had written some music while I was writing the script, the, the main Greenhouse, Greenhouse theme that you hear in the trailers. Rose, can you dance? Yeah, okay, well I'm gonna have you dance during the opening credits, and now you're a dancer. And that's, when you lose your leg, it'll make, mean even more to the audience. My character, Cherry, just starts out as this girl whose life is a bit on the skids, and all of a sudden, you know, I kinda have to save the universe. You know how that goes. She was born to be an action hero. She really was. She was born to play this role, quite frankly. First of all, she's stunningly beautiful. Actor. And she's got this great sense of comedic timing and physicality, which is so perfect for the role. I broke my leg. OK. I made you something. <laughs> my gun goes in strange places. <laughs> and I always ask Robert, how did you come up with the fact that I have a machine gun leg? And every time the answer is, well, I was sitting in traffic. And that's where it stops. I sit in traffic a lot. I don't often have machine gun legs that pop in my head, but that's just me. You okay? I'm just Cherry. Developing the character with Rose, I, it was, it was, it's the first time I really did it this way, where I came up with a machine gun leg and some of the gags for her, but I didn't really write any more in the other characters. I still only had that 30 pages, um, basically, for the other characters. So I thought, you know what? I'm getting so inspired by things Rose says. So just her personality, a lot of, she told me, you know, she's told me before that she, uh, people tell her she should be a stand-up comedian and things like that. All that stuff came from her. I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. Really? You're not funny. And I put that in as a character, just adding her own unusual personality to create a character. That, and I thought, that's always, I like being inspired by actors. So I wrote maybe another 10, 20 pages, and then I stopped and started casting. And Quentin was like, well, you're casting already? I said, yeah, I'm going to go meet the actors. When I find somebody, because I have enough scenes, at least one good scene for each character that they can read. And off of that, I'll know kind of who I like and then I'll write the rest of the script with them in mind so I can play to their strengths and play to their personalities. He goes, oh, that's an interesting idea. Well, yeah, I don't know if I'm just being lazy or because there's just so many characters that they're not, it's hard for me to see them very individual until I can really put a face to them because I'm not writing for anyone in particular other than Rose. I always wanted to be a doctor. Instead, I can do this. Oh. Useless talent number 66. And one of the things she was always talking about whenever she did anything, she would just call it her useless talent. Oh, here's useless talent number 33. Or, and it'd be something funny that, you know, I guess there really isn't much use for it. But what if there was at some point? I'm very pliable. I had her do this one particular back bend that we had just found in the rehearsal. Is that really cool back bend. And said, oh, we got to bring that back. You have to dodge a missile somewhere. And it gets a, always gets a cheer from the audience because it's been set up so so much. But it's a it's a very fun phrase, funny phrase because you know I guess we all have a lot of seemingly useless talents. You remember how to ride a bike? Useless talent number thirty-two. Some of her best lines and, and ideas. I'm like, that's Rose. That was Rose's improvisation. That's her. That's her real personality in the character. I thought you said if you saw a deer, you shouldn't fucking swerve. Strap a machine gun leg on that, and then it just takes off from there. <laughs> great way to kill people. If you have to kill them, you can do it with your leg. <laughs> Marley Shelton, she turns in a hot mama who knows the score. <laughs> no, Marley was great. I worked with Marley in Sin City and uh, thought of her for this and wrote the part, you know, specifically for her. I play Dakota McGraw Block and I'm an anesthesiologist. Hi, Joe. I'm going to give you a very strong anesthetic. One of the ideas I'd had, that was a scene I'd carried around for a while, I'd heard from a friend of mine, came and told me this story, he's like, yeah, it was so weird, this anesthesiologist came by and he had his 
call them his friends, and then he would say, this friend is just going to take the sting off, and then this one's going to do this, and then after this one, you'll never see me again. And sure enough, I passed out, and when I woke up, I never saw him again. <laughs> and after my redheaded friend, That's a great little, that guy has a routine down. He loves his job, so I wanted her to be that kind of person. And action! Well, the funniest thing about my character is the physicality of playing a character who can't use her hands. And funny enough, I have hyper-flexible wrists. <laughs> so, so I was like, Robert, I was born to play this character because I can, I can actually move my wrists like in a really bizarre way. Um, and, uh, Stupid human tricks, um, but so that that was really fun for me. Just uh, you know, pl playing the frustration. She's a doctor who's rendered awkward. She's she's someone who's hyper efficient, type A personality, always in control. Who now is out of control. <laughs> I just want to make her life very complicated for the night on, so that everything's an ordeal. Just open your car door, or to get your key, you know, just to make people realize, like, wow, what if you had no use of your hands and you're trying to go save your kid? Your whole life screwed up. <laughs> I mean, just that alone is just going to be just a pain in the ass factor that that creates its own drama and its own suspense. You're a dancer. I was earlier tonight. Well, I'm pulling you out of retirement. <laughs> I had this comeback moment where I get to shoot my needle gun at the bad guy and then twirl it in like old school Western movie fashion, um, just like my pops, Quick Draw McGraw, Earl McGraw would. I was terrified. I spent months trying to learn how to do it. Where'd you get that? Useless talent number 37. The day we shot that scene, I was so nervous. I was like, I'm not gonna be able to do it. And we got it, so. I pulled it off. Fergie gets to play Tammy, which originally when I was writing it was based on a friend of mine named Tommy whose car broke down on the side of the road. And then I'm like, this is a grindhouse movie. I'm going to change Tommy to Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, it's a lesbian lover rather than a, a straight uh, relationship. It's kind of the grindhouse thinking. You always try to milk any, anything you could out of it. Thanks, JT. My casting director, uh, Mary Vernou, is really good. Uh, we were going, I was saying, I, I want somebody that looks like she's, Dakota's very strong, but I want a, another female character who looks like she, she could be a real, you know, really strong and take care of her and her child and someone who's got, you know, some real character to her. You could see the attraction. And she said, you know, this one girl, you know, Fergie's a singer, but she started as an actress and she's come in and read for me several times. She's really good. You should meet her. So she came in and read and she was great. I gotta go. Saving lives, are you? Now, how did you know that? <laughs> as I was filming the scene, when the zombies attacked me, um, Quentin really got into it. I think he had a lot of fun with that. Action, action. He's doing the whole run with me, so it's great. So I look over and I see Quentin, <laughs> and I have to kind of visualize this zombie-esque character. And uh, we kept having to redo the scene because he was getting so into being this creature that he was making all these noises. And he was blaming it on the other guys, but really, it was Quentin who was making all the noise. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm doing the scene, right? He comes to the part and he starts biting me. Ooh, I got some good I got some good job power I know, there. I know. Look at it. <laughs> it wasn't a bad it wasn't like a bite. She wasn't bleeding or anything, but certainly felt some teeth on flesh, but yeah, it happens. People get into their role. Quinn <laughs> <laughs> fucking bit me. And by the end of the shoot. I remember when I was writing the script, I'm going, oh, I've only got three babes in my movie. I don't know if that's enough for a grindhouse, but <laughs> I guess I have to make two. You get the twins, the twins you got five babes in your movie. <laughs> you said ten. You can't be watching your kills at night. We got shit to do. That's right. We probably won't get any more babysitting jobs ever in our life. After yeah, this. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> My nieces, I had an idea to cast them years ago when I first met them. They've been living in Venezuela. They came up. Um, they just moved to the States. They were just learning English. 
and they were, they were crazy. They were just so wild and just so uh, full of life, and they just finishing each other's sentences, and mixing English and Spanish, and just genuine characters. So I thought that'd be totally grindhouse to have you know two twins just there, and they were just being nuts. Or even said in the script, they're not infected. They're just crazy. And then they turn into good girls at the end with machine guns and turn out to be good allies because they can fight. They're feisty. Don't take shit from anybody. Fucking cool! We're like, give me a gun, I'm shooting oh, yeah, everything. We <laughs> shot everybody they told us to shoot to, people we weren't supposed to shoot to. We <laughs> yeah. shot everybody. <laughs> they told us, hey, yeah. stop, Don't, there's no monkey business going on, yeah. you know? Oh yeah, we were like serious. joking around and they said, no, you can't do this and they, don't put the hand on the trigger. They always say, we always forget. Because, you know, playing when we're little, you know, we shoot guns all the time playing. Who's next? I am. Oh, my God, I'm scared. I'm so scared. And Jeff Fahey sat us down, and he said, you listen to me. You hold that gun, you can kill somebody with that thing. And I was like, okay, okay. So we, he held us accountable for it. It's so dangerous, you know? And the crew has been really understanding just because it, first film for us and first experience. So they have a lot of patience explaining to us what, how to deal with everything. You can stop here, shoot, and we can work. Move, move. You look at the credits, it says, you know, starring you know, Rose, Josh, this, and the crazy babysitter twins. <laughs> it doesn't say their names. <laughs> Cherry. You sure are.